Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing Cuckoo. This film was directed by Tillman Singer. I knew next to nothing about this uh, young German director before seeing this film, but you know, new and interesting horror films always tend to, uh, you know, blip on my radar. It's clear that this film had, you know, a very eccentric tone and maybe leaned into some, to some European cinematic influences. This film is... Mm. <laughs> uh, it's something. It's, it's, um, it somehow lives up to its title content wise as it as it's quite batshit and I probably won't forget it. It just doesn't feel uh, fully rendered as a piece as a story even though I do see a lot of creativity and a lot of talent in this in this director. He's clearly wanting to push for unique concepts and ways of of palating the, the horror experience maybe differently than we are used to you know filtering it through his own vision. And I do I, I admire his his chutzpah and his his ability or I should say his desire to want to take on so many uh, ideas at once. There's you know a lot you could do with this particular concept of a young girl a young American girl who is you know in the German Alps working in this hotel and it's like you know she's feeling very alone she wants to go back home to America there is an emphasis on I would say wealth and, and class throughout the movie and obviously the American German crossover thing you could say a lot about that thematically if you wanted to explore it I don't want to get into too many you know spoilers or anything like that but I there's a lot of, I would say, maternal, familial themes as well. So like I said, there's a lot going on here, and at times I would say there's real grit in this movie. It's properly unsettling and dreamy, and even though this does become annoying when you look at it with perspective, in the moment I like that disorienting feel feeling of, you know, where everything feels fragmented. It's like it's, it's very jarring. Sure, it doesn't help with, I think, audience confusion at the end of the day, but there is, yeah, there's something to the essence of this movie that Again, I just, I don't feel like I want to overlook it, even though the film is frustrating. It's important to, you know, not dismiss it. But I think Singer is ultimately a victim to his own ambition because he gets so lost in all of the things that he's trying to do to the point where it feels like he's tripping over himself. It's as if he is trying to ride a unicycle while juggling and then singing to us. And, you know, again, the attempt is impressive and you want to admire it to a degree. He's just not able to keep anything coherent and committed. Uh, and so the whole thing starts to feel wobbly and I'm constantly afraid it's going to collapse in on itself. It's a film that I think wants to say a lot and yet it's, it's struggling very hard so far as what it wants to be. And I think that's a real identity problem. It's horror film, I think, first and foremost, most with a lot of very surrealistic dreamy experimentation going on and you know it's also effective body horror and I rarely I rarely say that because I'm a big fan of body horror type stuff it also tries to be kind of like a complicated sci-fi uh, film at the heart of it while also trying to become also like this weird action thriller type thing in the third act so you know you see what I mean and yet you know I, I just don't want to write it off because I have to admit I think this had some of the more effective um, horror moments I've seen this year in horror films, but that's not a high bar because I think most of the horror films I've seen this year have been quite disappointing and quite unimaginative. Even some of my favorite horror films of the year I still consider to be somewhat subpar compared to what I'm used to, but you know, again, with this film, the imagination that's going into it, it has merit. And even when it got so convoluted and weighed down by all of that to where I didn't care about, you know, the characters and the plot and the specifics or anything like that, I liked hanging out in the world and I liked, for a while at least, I enjoyed trying to piece the puzzle together. And I think it's just because the film is so bizarre, you're just really like, where is this going to go? How are they, how are they going to make sense of all of this possibly? There are these like random images and moments and it feels like little, little pricks, almost like you're eating like chicken or something and you found like a little bone in it and it's just, it's really unsettling. It keeps me on my toes. The sound design in this I thought was really shrill and really trippy and I liked, you know, the concept here of like the time loop, getting caught in the time loop. In theory, I think it is really cool. Maybe not fully utilized to its great extent, greatest extent, but I, I like the, the concept. One of the best things I think about this entire film is, is our anchor that is trying to keep all of this craziness going on uh, centered, and that is our, our main hero, who is played by Hunter Schaefer. And um, yeah, I gotta say, she she knocked it out of the park. Schaefer is somebody who, you know, I got to know watching Euphoria. That is how most people got to know her. That is her acting claim to fame, at least. A lot of people really liked her character in that film. I, you know, it's like I found her compelling to a degree, but maybe not as much as everybody else. Part of it had to do with, I felt 
always felt that her character was was quite underwritten. But also I have a thing when, you know, writers in, in TV or movies, when they're constantly trying to shove it down our throat, how compelling and how, how special somebody is, how unique, it, you know, I'm, I tend to resist it. And so I did with that character. But, you know, more, more I'm watching of her, the more I'm realizing, you know, that is that is less her fault. But here she has 100% the emotional presence, the, the magnetism, the charisma, just the, just the cinematic flair, I would say, to hold our attention. As scatterbrained as this thing is, she does a fantastic job of staying cool and collected and just and, and keeping us grounded as, as possible in the story. We always want to follow her and she's somebody that we can relate to because this is a world of very you know, very high class kind of elitist type of people. And so she is this rebellious teenager who is kind of awkwardly inserted into every single situation. And, you know, she can tell that the world isn't right and she's going to call people out on it. The way that she slouches and yet sometimes she'll like hold her, her shoulders, her body in this very kind of stiff sort of way. And it, it, it's humorous. It feels very authentic to who her character could be. Um, but what I love most about her is how effortlessly she can fall into these, you know, deeply vulnerable moments, heartbreaking emotional moments with such, yeah, with such ease. I think it's really unwavering. I'm rooting for her as an acting performer. I want to see her in, in more movies. Another good performance I liked was, was Dan Stevens, who seems to be having a lot of fun here playing, uh, the, the antagonist. He's very cunning and very sly in his delivery. He's leaning into the humor, very like posh and sniveling and all of that. But, you know, you can see in his eyes, it's like he is very aware that he's in control of the situation. He has something that he is hiding from us. And we always know that from day one. I feel like he could always play villains now if he wanted to. He has the perfect look for it. I would say my only problem, and it's more a, a writing problem and not so much an acting problem, but it's that the character, he doesn't really bridge the gap between all of these, you know, jarring tonal shifts going on. It's too half-baked and he only exists part of the way there. You know, he's part of, I would say, the camp and the quirky part of it. He's like the cartoony villain. But his his motives as a character become so ridiculous and, and so complicated, needlessly complicated, that the whole movie, that's when it starts to stumble all over itself. And yeah, the exposition in the writing just gets longer and longer and longer. And as I suspected in the beginning, it's like, yeah, our director bit off more than he could chew. Who knew? He sets up all of these promising hints for where we could potentially go, um, but the lack of organization in the structure makes it all just kind of useless at the end of the day. I think as a writer, you have to be really, you know, you got to pay attention to that. The more you start to fight the flow of the thing, the flow of the film, that's when everything is going to start to cave in a little bit. And the more you have to dig yourself out of these impossibly complicated, you know, scenarios as a writer, you run the risk of more confusion. You run the risk of creating more plot holes that you didn't intend. And that's not a good place to be when you've, you've lost the, the narrative and you've lost the emotions, you've lost the audience attention. And, you know, I think this was a missed opportunity. And like I said, there was potential for all of these like core themes to really be brought forward to the forefront. Like, like I said, the familial, more ma maternal things that are existing here, but we don't really do anything with them. Sometimes when a movie becomes more unhinged and more ludicrous that can actually, you know, work in its favor, to a degree, I kind of felt that about watching Trap, you know, M. Night Shyamalan's Trap, which I reviewed uh, last week. But I think this one is a lot less committed to like the, the slippery humor, the awareness of the genre bending. It's a little bit too self-serious and yet it cannot give a convincing explanation to what the hell all of this is supposed to amount to. So that's kind of insulting. Is it more just clever, very strong aesthetic choices going on here or is that attached to something deeper? I would say it's more the first one. But like I said, those aesthetic choices were more interesting than what I'm used to, you know, especially this year. I felt this movie had a lot more imagination in the horror elements than something like Maxine and even, even Longlegs to a degree. This is frustrating as hell, but you know, I do think it's worth the watch, especially if you're, yeah, a cinema fan. I think there are elements here that are creative. If you like horror, yeah, I, I don't know if I would go see it in the theater, but I'd stream it. I think Hunter Schaefer is, is a promising talent. And, you know, again, I don't want to dismiss this director because I think, you know, it's important to keep him in the peripherals. He has something, but that is my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. It is deepfocuslens.com. I'm an artist. I do commission portraits and I also sell prints of my work. If that is something that you're interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a commission or a print, you can always email me 
My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who are great. Guys, thank you so much for your support. Welcome to all the new members. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below, as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here, and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.